Welcome everyone to today's presentation on segmental retaining wall design. This presentation will guide you through how to design a basic segmental retaining wall. It is presented on behalf of the Concrete Masonry Association of Australia, the industry association that represents Australia's concrete masonry and paver manufacturers. Before we dive into our presentation, we're quickly going to look at some background information that will be of use. We will also look at applying our knowledge to a worked example. Segmental retaining walls consist of modular concrete blocks that are interlocked with each other. A segmental retaining wall uses the dead weight of the unit to resist lateral earth pressures. They can be soil reinforced with geogrids to help support very high loads, which would typically cause failure in an unreinforced wall. When constructing a soil retaining structure, there are government regulations and provisions to be followed. These differ for each state and territory and is also heavily dependent on the project site and surrounding environment. The typical allowable wall height for a DIY retaining structure can be seen on screen. You are required to consult a structural engineer when exceeding these heights. For segmental retaining wall design, AS4678 is the primary reference industry document that is required to be used. This standard sets out the requirements and recommendations relating to the design and construction of structures required to retain soil, rock and other materials. The design requirements of retaining walls is in accordance with Section 3 of AS4678, with ultimate limit state design considerations shown on screen. It should be noted that not all retaining walls will have to consider pullout and rupture. These are only applicable to soil reinforced retaining walls. And for our working example, the failure modes will include sliding and overturning analysis. Depending on your system, the stability may also need to be assessed. Sliding failure occurs when the wall moves away from the backfill, when there is shearing failure at the base of the wall. To overcome sliding failure, the retaining structure will need to overcome the horizontal force applied to the wall. Sliding can occur both internally, as only a section of the wall failing, or externally, as the whole retaining structure failing. Overturning failure is the rotation of the wall about the toe due to the exceeding moment by rotational forces overcoming resisting forces. Global slip failure occurs when the internal strength of the soil fails to support the complete soil mass, which results in a sliding rotational failure plane along the boundary. And finally, with bearing failure, which occurs when the underlying soil fails to support the weight of the retaining wall structure, causing it to sink downwards. Now, moving on to our design example, we are required to design a 1 meter high segmental retaining wall with a 1 in 8 unit batter that satisfies the minimum requirement for AS4678 with a level backfill. To design a segmental retaining wall in accordance with AS4678, the following preliminary information will be required. This includes the structural classification, the surcharge loading, the segmental block properties, the earth pressure coefficients, and the soil properties. From our example, we know that this retaining wall will be used in a garden so we can safely say that the structural classification is A from AS4678 table 1.1 where failure would result in minimal damage and loss of access. This correlates to our design factor which we obtained from AS4678 table 5.2 giving us a value of 1.1. More information can be found in AS4678 appendix A section A3. The surcharge loading is obtained from AS4678 table 4.1 it is based off our previously obtained structural classification and backfill slope. As our design example uses a structural classification A and has a level backfill, we can obtain the value of our surcharge loading of 2.5 kPa. For our segmental block, we require the relevant unit properties, which includes the dimensions of the masonry unit, the width of the wall, and the total mass of the masonry unit, which includes the aggregates that lie in the voids. Combining these properties, we can calculate the unit weight for our wall, giving us a value of 18.82 kN per meter cubed. For our retaining wall, the soil properties need to be determined for both the retained soil and the leveling pad, as per AS4678 clause 1.4.3. The assumptions in regarding the friction angle, the cohesion, and the unit weight 
for both retained soil and the leveling pad can be found on the screen. Following this, we need to factor our soil properties for design. This can be done through table 5.1a, where we need to determine firstly the uncertainty factors for our soil based on the soil conditions from AS467A. For this, we use a uncertainty factor of 0.95 which is used to determine the design friction angle for retained soil, the characteristic external friction angle, the design friction angle for our leveling pad, and also the design cohesion. Using these soil properties, we can determine our active pressure coefficient by combining these parameters, give us an active pressure coefficient of 0.2. Finally, we need to stipulate the load factors that will be used in our equations in determining the overturning and resisting loads, which are available on screen as per AS 1170.0. As a general summary, we've already determined the wall geometry, the structural classification, the surcharge loading, the unit properties, earth pressures, and the soil properties for use later on. Our calculations should follow the design principle where our design factor multiplied by the design resistance effect shall be greater or equal to the design action effect, which is made up of a combination of the retained soil and the surcharge load, while our resistance effect is made up of just the mass of the wall itself. Firstly, we need to determine the horizontal driving forces from the force due to the surcharge and the force due to the soil. This is done off our previous values giving us a value of 0.73 kN per meter due to the surcharge and 2.3 kN per meter due to the soil. We also need to account for overturning failure due to the moment by determining the lever arm for each of our forces. Similarly to our horizontal driving force calculations, the vertical resisting forces need to be calculated to determine if our wall is designed adequately. Following the equation, we get a resisting force due to the mass of the wall of 4.74 kN per meter. Similar to our previous slide, we also need to calculate the lever arm for overturning moments, which takes into account the unit batter, giving us a value of 0.22 meters. We can now use the calculated values to determine whether or not our wall is stable. Overall, we get a driving force of 3.03 kN per meter and a resisting force of 4.74 kN per meter. From this, we can obtain a factored resisting force of 4.16 kN per meter due to friction, which is greater than our driving force of 3.03 kN per meter, satisfying the design principles for sliding. Similarly, for overturning, once the lever arm is considered in the calculations, we get a factored resisting moment of 1.14 kN meters per meter, which is greater than our overturning moment of 1.13 kN meters per meter. Following these calculations, we can safely say that our design satisfies the design principles to ensure sliding and overturning will not occur. To conclude our design, the example satisfies the sliding and overturning properties of AS4678, although further analysis will still need to be done. Once the analysis for global slip and bearing failure have been completed, we can safely say that our design example completely satisfies AS4678 limit state design principles. The Concrete Masonry Association of Australia has a great range of technical information on retaining wall design with design considerations and detailed worked examples. This is available through our technical manuals RW01, RW02 and RW03 which you can find through the link provided on your screen right now. This concludes the presentation on segmental retaining wall design. Our website also houses a range of different resources, also freely available to download. We explore key topics on masonry and architectural wall design, segmental and permeable pavements, and soil retaining structures through technical manuals, research papers, fact sheets, and case studies. We also provide a free hotline to cover any technical inquiries in case you have any further questions on any of the topics we've already covered shown on screen. Please visit our website for more information and thank you for your time.